But anyway, like I said, we uh, we saw these pictures posted uh, the other day on Strava, and we were kind of impressed with the fact that uh, the trail is right near our home. So wouldn't that be a great little place to uh, be able to get some fresh air some times during the winter months? We haven't been doing any real cycling at all in quite a while. A number of things have kind of gotten away. Not that that's an excuse, but I guess that's our reason behind it right now. But now that uh, 2020 is here, and uh, January is just uh, beginning, it won't be long before we'll be getting back on our trainers in the basement, start to get our legs back in shape again, so that come, uh, well, I would believe Mar by March or so, we'll be getting back on the road. And actually, we're probably uh, going to get back on the road maybe even as soon as tomorrow. Is, I know. Is that tomorrow, the warm day? Yeah, uh, tomorrow, yeah, Friday and Saturday. Which which of the two days is warm? Tomorrow. Tomorrow's going to jump, the temperature's going to jump right up. So we're going to be, whoops, just bump my toe. The temperature's going to be jumping up, so we were thinking maybe we'll get out there and uh, embarrass ourselves <laughs> out on our bikes for a few miles. It won't be anything like we did when we stopped riding, but uh, you know, these things take time. You have to uh, build back up your endurance and your leg strength and even to the point of getting your getting uh, your ass calloused up again so you can stand sitting in a seat for any length of time. You know, it's funny in the Java Post they're saying how the lines were kind of blurred between the white trail and the blue trail and this one zigzagged their way through yeah it's it's a little confusing um only because this trail is uh is designated as a white trail and according to the signpost at the trailhead if you stay on the white trail uh it'll lead you right back to where you began and that's what we thought we would do would make some offense just starting out on this trail for the first time but uh, apparently there's quite a bit of oh, land trust property here in Guilford. So one section runs into another, and that's what we discovered. As we walked the white trail and came up to a sign that said that this was the Guilford property line, and then there was, there was continued trail that you can continue following another trail, but that was a blue trail. And in fact, I think what we discovered or thought thought of is that that blue trail had we followed it probably would have led us all the way back to where we had been when we did the previous video out in the trail so anyway long story short <laughs> this white trail is from the trailhead goes out and essentially almost turns you right back around and heads you back on the white trail again back to where you started but um we're hoping uh to take advantage of this location, come out here and take longer walks and incorporate our walk with not just one trail, the white trail, but go from the white trail to the blue trail and continue that walk all the way over to Madison, which is the next town over. That might be kind of fun. And you know what? The nice thing about being retired, you can come out here in the middle of the week. And you have the whole place for yourself. Yeah. Um, well, not only had the whole place for ourselves, but essentially, this doesn't look like a place that's very well visited. No. Um, as, as we said, just to get to the trailhead, you have to walk through um, someone's private property, which you're allowed to do, but it's right off of a street. And I don't know whether or not they allowed parking on the street or in the cul-de-sac that this, that this street is situated on. So I don't know if a lot of other people kind of visit this area. Plus the fact I don't know if a lot of people know about it. So Yeah, half a mile from home, you didn't know about it. Half a mile from home. I've lived here 20 years and I never knew about it. 
course, my interests have changed over the last 20 years. So 20 years ago, I may not have been interested in all of doing anything in the way of walking around these trails. But uh, right from this standpoint right here, if you can just take a quick look around, uh, it's uh, it's really a pretty little area. It's a nice area. Of course, it's the middle. Of, it's, it's in the middle, in the dead of winter, so everything is dead. But um, we've come across quite a few little streams that contribute to a good-sized lake that's located down that way. So, uh, from a nature standpoint, it's really nice. I wish we had this in our backyard. I wish I we had this sound. Yeah, running water. No, yeah. nobody, nobody dislikes running water. A nice sound to have and someone did take the time to build some little bridges here where it gets really wet and uh, would make it kind of awkward to uh, to walk through it the uh, the date of this video kind of coincides very closely to when the new Insta360 camera has been released. I'm using an Insta360 ONE X, and the ONE R is currently the new release. And there's a lot of buzz about that camera right now. But I tell you, uh, I've had the, this ONE X now for oh, about one year. I didn't use it much last year at all. And this year, uh, I started to get back into it. And one of the reasons that I upgraded from the one, the Insta, Insta 361, which was the first 360 camera, to this one, is that the video quality is supposedly much improved, which I find is true. So from that standpoint, I'm very happy with the camera in terms of the quality of the video you get out of it. And like most action cameras or cameras that are like this, uh, audio has always been a difficult thing to improve upon unless you had an external microphone, which I used to have on my GoPro. Um, but this camera here, I've been learning to use other means to get audio. Right now, the audio is pretty decent on it because, first of all, I'm holding the camera relatively close to where I am, yeah, to my face. And uh, secondly, I'm not riding along on the bike, so there's not a lot of wind noise, obviously. But um, I do have a way of handling that when I am riding the bike. Uh, but uh, last time I used the camera, about a week ago, uh, I was really impressed, kind of actually surprised a bit how good the audio came out. And again, going back to the beginning of this video, it, I mentioned the reason I'm out here is to test out a theory that the reason that audio was so good was what direction the camera was pointing on when I when I recorded it. Yeah, and you were shocked that it picked up my, what you say, soft voice. <laughs> Can't help it. I may be 5'10", but my voice is not she has the <laughs> She has the tiniest little voice. <laughs> For such a tall person. For such a big person. Just not a little, big. Not big. Tiny, little tiny voice. <laughs> Keep telling her, what? Speak up. I can't hear you. That's what I generally like to do. I know. I can't hear you. I can't hear you. I don't even no. say I can't hear you. I just say, I can't hear you. Start over again. Selective listening. Yeah. <laughs> well, part of that is her voice, and part of it is probably my hearing. I hate to sound like, sound like an old fart, but when you get to be a certain age, I guess that's one of the things that starts to suffer if you're hearing. Say that again. What? <laughs> you couldn't hear, huh? 